Hello everyone and welcome to HP Extreme, the new generation of hot process soap making. This is Sharon with Rose of Sharon Essential Skin Care and I'm so blessed to have you join me today for the making of bath bombs. And don't forget, there is now the SJHP SBHP ebook tutorial and recipes, 10 minute hot process soap making with Sharon Johnson. So head on over and get your copy today. Now, are you ready to make some bath bombs? Well, let's get started. So I've already measured out all of my dry ingredients, which consist of baking soda, citric acid, and cornstarch. And for this recipe, it is not necessary to sift any of your ingredients. I've also measured out my Epsom salts separately, as well as my wet ingredients, which consist of distilled water, rubbing alcohol, and my fragrance oil. Next, I'll be adding 1 4 teaspoon of colorant to my wet ingredients. You may also use mica colorants or even food coloring as your color of choice. I have also found that using as little as 1 8 teaspoon of colorant works just as well. Now the bath bomb recipe I'll be using today has been tweaked and fine-tuned to my own personal liking. However, the creator of the original bath bomb recipe is the lovely Willow Dawn, who is also a member of our Facebook group. And with her permission, I have provided a link to her YouTube channel, as well as her original recipe in the description box down below. So don't forget guys to head on over and subscribe to her YouTube channel as well. Now here I've added my wet ingredients to my Epsom salts. I personally find it easier to incorporate my wet ingredients into my dry ingredients if I mix them with my Epsom salts beforehand. So next, I'll slowly stir in the Epsom salt mixture into the dry ingredients. So the hardest part is stir, stir, stir to incorporate everything together. So now I'm stirring the mixture with my hands, making sure that everything is, is very well incorporated around the sides of the bowl and also on the bottom. And so now I just grab it in my hands to make sure that the mixture feels like wet sand and it also sticks together. So I squeeze really hard and I'm getting exactly what I was looking for. I will be creating the first bath bomb using a round mold, which is actually a Christmas tree ornament. These ornaments can be purchased either online or from your local craft or hobby stores. I've now added my rose petals to the bottom of the mold. Now I'm lightly adding the bath bomb mixture on top. I am not packing the bath bomb mixture into the mold. Again, do not pack the bath bomb mixture. What you want is to form two snowballs. Well, they look like snowballs. And you slowly press them together. Do not twist, but only press both sides firmly together. So 
So now I'm using a spoon to tap around the mold on the top and on the bottom so that it'll allow for easier unmolding of the bath bomb. Voila! Wow, is that not a perfect bath bomb? Up close and personal. Okay, so let's take this to the next level and use cookie cutters to create bath bombs. Okay, so here's the trick. The cookie cutter must be plastic, not metal, but plastic. And when you're packing the mixture into the cookie cutter, the lip or rim of the cookie cutter must always be facing upward. So now that I've added the rose petals, I will now spoon some of the bath bomb mixture into the cookie cutter on top of the rose petals again with the lip or rim of the cookie cutter always facing upward. I also use my fingers to press down the mixture uh, after I spoon it in. So you'll feel it getting very tight and you want to make sure that everything is very well compacted. So again, I use my fingers to lightly press down the mixture. Now I use a little elbow grease and I use the palm of my hand to press harder to make sure everything is very well compacted. That looks good to me. So now it's time to unmold. So you gently press down, press, 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 and you'll feel the pressure being released from the bath bomb. You can lightly lift up the cookie cutter while you're pressing. And there you have it, a perfect bath bomb. So on to the next bath bomb. Remember, the lip or the rim of the cookie cutter must always be facing upward. So again, spoon the mixture into the cookie cutter. Use your fingers to press down to make sure everything is very well compacted. So you spoon and press, spoon and press. Now use a little elbow grease to make sure everything is tight. And again, turn the cookie cutter over and gently press the bath bomb through the center. Lightly lifting up the cookie cutter so that the pressure can be released. Gently press, press, and there you have it. Another beautiful bath bomb. And now for the last cookie cutter, again, rim or lip of the cookie cutter always facing upward. And for this bath bomb, I'll be using a Wilton sugar candy to place down the center of the bath bomb. Turn the candy facing downward and again, spoon 
the mixture on top of the Wilton sugar candy. Yep, spoon and press, spoon and press. You don't want your bath bomb falling apart when you lift it up. And if you don't press hard enough, that's exactly what will happen. So we want to make sure it's very, very tight and compact. Now it's time for a little elbow grease. Please be sure to use the palm of your hand and press very hard. Press, press, flip it over. Wow, is that beautiful. It looks like a flower. Now gently press down the center and around the edges a little, gently lifting up the cookie cutter as you press. And you'll feel it sliding out and the pressure being released. Don't press too hard or you'll crack the edges. Wow, there it is. Another perfect bath bomb that looks like a flower. Now for this last demonstration, I wanted to show you why you should not use metal cookie cutters to create bath bombs. I started to use rose petals again for this demonstration, but I thought, nah, maybe not, because I already know the outcome. Now as you can see, I'm following the exact same steps I did for the previous cookie cutters. I'm spooning in the big bath bomb mixture and then I'm pressing and I'm spooning and pressing, making sure everything is tight and very well compacted. Now I'm making sure I press hard, press very, very hard. So I flip it over and now I'm going to press down the center and around the edges and you'll see what happens. Not a very pretty sight. Uh, nope, don't think that worked out quite too well. Yep, a crumbly mess is what it turned out to be. So again, I suggest not using a metal cookie cutter, but only plastic. You'll see how they bend and they have a little give to them. So that's what makes a very nice bath bomb mold is plastic only, no metal. And last but not least, I wanted to share with you how I dust off my bath bombs. Oops, do you see any feet over there? Sorry guys, no shoes on in the kitchen. <laughs> Okay, I use a basting brush from Betty Crocker to dust off my bath bombs. And I like to dust them off before I use any uh, plastic wrap or saran wrap or shrink wrap to uh, wrap my bath bombs before storing or shipping. Okay guys, one last tip. After I make my bath bombs, I like to place them in a clean and dry environment. And that place for me is the oven. So for at least 24 hours, I leave my bath bombs in the oven while the oven is turned off. So unfortunately, there won't be any cooking going on in the oven for at least 24 hours. 
Ah, what a shame. Sorry, hubby. I hope you've enjoyed this bath bomb tutorial. Don't forget, if you'd like to see more videos, to please rate, comment, and subscribe. Now before I go, I want to leave you with this. May God continue to bless you, keep you, and shine His face upon you. And remember, no matter what happened yesterday, today, or even tomorrow, God's mercies are new every morning. Now I don't know about you, but I get excited when I hear those words, because to me personally, it means no matter what bad choices I made in the past, what crazy mistakes I'm going to make today, or even what I'm going to do in the future, that God forgives me. His mercies are new for me, just as they are for you every single morning. So God bless you, and I can't wait to see you the next time.